Hello everyone and welcome to Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches episode 23. My name is Monica. You can find me on all of the social medias as Quarrelsome Rhino um, and on Ravelry as Morux, M-O-R-U-X. Um, yeah, it is. it has been several weeks since I last podcasted and mostly that's due to um, I haven't really had a whole lot of time to sit down and just knit. Um, and make a lot of progress on, on various things. So I decided to hold off on a podcast episode for an extra week so that I actually have some stuff to share with you. Um, so a lot has happened, um, since the beginning of the year. It is already almost halfway through, uh, it's already over halfway through January, um, which is insane. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, um we'll get right into it, I guess. So this is a knitting podcast. Um, I am generally fairly crafty. I share all of my knitting things on here. Today I will have a little bit of sewing to share um, because one of my gifts for Christmas was a sewing machine. So um, I'm really excited. I have had a sewing machine in the past, but it broke and um, I left it in California when I moved from there to Maine. Um, and yeah, so now I have a new sewing machine that I can use, um, and yeah, it's really exciting. So, um, I guess I will get right into, um, works in progress, but I guess first I should share, this is one of my finished objects from last year that I wear quite frequently. Um, it is my meandering shawl. It's a pattern by Stephen West. The yarn is, this purple yarn is, um, a cashmere, merino cashmere nylon blend. It is a colorway called Amethyst. It's by Wonderland Yarns. And then this white is, a uh, Knit Picks Stroll. Um, this is, like, my go-to shawl. I wear it almost constantly. But that may change here, um, in the next couple of days when I finish up one of my works in progress. So, there's that. That is what I'm wearing today. I'm also wearing one of my favorite presents to myself for Christmas, which is a cool Slytherin um, uh, sweater So that I got at Hot Topic. It's the only time I've been into Hot Topic since I was a teenager, I think. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to get right into my works in progress. So I have showed this to you before, um, but I did put a little bit of work on it, uh, into it. So here is a sock. Um, I am making these socks for my aunt who lives in Pennsylvania. Um, my grandmother bought the yarn for me to make the socks out of, and so I'm slowly working on that. I am going to be doing an afterthought heel, but I have put in some waist yarn, so it's not like a true afterthought heel. Um, so I'm almost to the point where I will be decreasing for the toe, um, and then I'll have to make a second one. Unfortunately, I didn't write any of these instructions down. I don't remember how many stitches I have, so I'm going to have to do some counting before I cast the second one on. Um, I'm doing these actually on my 9-inch circulars. They are the Chow Gu. Uh, nine inch circs. I believe that these are a 2.25 millimeter needle. Yes, it is US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, and I really like this for just plain vanilla socks. Um, I do find that my hands cramp a little bit more, but um, once I get used to holding it, um, it's not that bad. I have like really tiny hands, so so it actually works pretty well. I can actually fit my whole hand into the nine inch circular. Um, yeah, I've got really short, small fingers, so it's pretty easy for me to, to get in there and do that. So there is that. I have some, of, some extra of this yarn. Um, I have a feeling that this sock is not going to take all of the 50 grams. So, um, I've got its Premier Yarns Wool Free Sock. Um, it is, let's see what color. 
Saguaro Sky is what it's called. Um, but yeah, it's a really pretty striping yarn. Um, and when I first saw it in the skein, I didn't think it was going to be striping, but it is. So sort of self-patterning as well, which is nice. Um, I'm holding that right now in my um, Hannah Lisa Haverkamp bag. Um, this is the, like, I think this is the smallest size that she does. Um, but if you want to see her little logo tag there, this one is nice. It has a pocket on the inside. It's also got a, um, like a little clasp in there for like holding stitch markers or for a yarn guide or whatever you want to use it for. Um, I really like this bag. Um, it's really nice. Um, this bottom part is wool, I believe, wool felt. Anyway, I love this bag. Next, uh, um, my next work in progress. I only have three works in progress and I don't have any finished objects. So this may be a shorter episode. Um, so my next work in progress is a sweater that you that may give you a little bit of deja vu. Um, so last year I knit myself a Chuck sweater um, by Andy Satterland. And I'm now knitting a second one. So this one is a present for a friend of mine. Um, and so we're going to have matching sweaters, which I think is cute. Um, but um, I have... So her measurements are different than mine. Um, and so I'm making a different size than I made originally. Um, so I'm about halfway done right now. I've got um, one more cable repeat and then the bottom band to do and then the sleeves and the neck facing. But I'm about halfway done with the body. So yeah, um, I'm really happy with my progress. I made almost all of this progress yesterday. I, yesterday when I started, I had just started the front cable um, and I was like right here and I made all of this progress yesterday. So that was really good. It felt like I actually made progress on something. Um, because my other project is really small, um, and, or like using small yarn, so it's hard to see progress like that really easily. Um, so I'm knitting this out of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. It is the same one that I made, um, my Chuck sweater out of. Um, it is in the color Oatmeal. Um, and I have this plus a whole other skein of it, and so I have a feeling I'm gonna have quite a bit left over even after making two sweaters from it. So I really didn't need to buy three giant balls of it. So um, I probably could have made myself a full length cabled sweater out of all three skeins, but yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so as you know, like my Chuck sweater has really short sleeves. Um, I think I'm going to make whatever, I don't know what sleeve length um, Andy Satterland has in the pattern, but I think I'm gonna make that for my friends since I don't really know how long she wants her sleeves It is a fairly warm sweater and she does live in Florida So she may not get a whole lot of a chance to wear it, but um, next time I visit her where I'm gonna have it I'm gonna I'm probably gonna gift it to her before I go come to go to Florida, but um, We'll take pictures together. I think that's the that'll be the event anyway um <laughs> So my last work in progress, I told you I was going to, f I was going to cast on as soon as I finished something else. Um, and instead of doing that, I, I just cast it on because I really, really liked it, the idea of it, and I'd seen everybody else making one, and that is my Oracle shawl. Now it's going to be really hard to show in full on the, on the podcast because it is fairly sizable now. Um, I have been working on this almost monogamously for the last three weeks. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, so it'll be kind of hard to show, but so here is the first sort of section and then there is, um, yeah, so I'm almost done actually with it. Um, so I decided to do the full pie. I know that I, I actually shared that I was going to do the half one, but, um, I wanted to use up as much of these gorgeous squishy yarns as I as I could. So, um, starting with the center, this first color is um, a yarn by the Corner of Craft. It is uh, the chromatic yarns in the Storm of Vengeance colorway. Um, 
This second one is by String Theory. It's a charcoal gray um, on their Merino Cashmere blend, I believe. Uh, and then this third color that's like this deeper kind of blue is uh, Stranded Dye Works in the P.E. Knickers colorway. And then it's back to Storm of Vengeance. You can get a better idea of Storm of Vengeance from this, I think. Anyway, so I really enjoy uh, this knit. I'm back to a brioche section, which I like so much more than I like lace sections because you're only, it's kind of zen knitting for me now. Um, if you like, if you remember, I guess last year when I taught myself brioche with this shawl, um, I was having, I was feeling really stressed out about it basically. Um, I was, I didn't feel like I was doing it very well and I didn't know like it was taking me forever, but this has taken me no time at all to do these two brioche sections and it's taken me forever to do this lace. And the lace is intuitive and it's and it's easily memorizable. I was just, it's just so many repeats of this pattern um, around now. So there are very close to 600 stitches on my needles right now. Um, and in, um, in about 14 rows, it's gonna increase, it's gonna double. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be quite a long journey to the end, but I think it's definitely gonna be worth it. Um, the pattern calls for an I-cord bind off and I have never successfully done an I-cord bind off. Um, and by successfully, I mean it doesn't pull my knitting at all. Um, this I cord bind off is not very good in that my if you see like this bow here is because my bind off is not as stretchy um, as I wished it had been um, so I did it too tight so what I think I'm going to attempt see as you can see like it kind of folds over because the bind off is too tight for the stretchiness of this shawl so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go up two needle sizes because I think I went up one needle size for this and I just think that I do I-cord edges really tightly and hopefully I will be able to um, will be able to get the I-cord bind off to look right because it is going to take a really long time um, and so I want it to look nice. Um, so far, I guess knock on wood, um, I haven't really messed up a whole lot in this pattern. Um, it's really simple. I haven't even really had to count my stitches to be um, right on with the lace. So that has been really nice. It's like a nice sort of zen knit. Um, so hopefully I'll be done with it soon. It right now kind of looks like the top of a jellyfish. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so I'm hoping to have it done here pretty soon so I can block it. Um, I'm really excited to look to see what it looks like finished um, and then to wear it uh, as well because I feel like this is going to be a really um, versatile. I'll be able to wear this a lot actually with a lot of my outfits um, because I wear a lot of blue. Um, I love purple, but I wear a lot of blue um, clothing, um, blue and gray clothing. So hopefully that'll be good to fit with my wardrobe. Um, yeah, so those are all three of my works in progress, which um, usually I have a lot more going on. Um, I do have like my crochet blanket that I'm working on, but I haven't made any progress in that since I last shared it. So I'm not gonna bring it out and show it to you again at the same amount of progress. Um, but yeah, so that is, that's everything that I have for knitting content. I do have one small acquisition and then um, I want to show you what I made, what I sewed for myself. Um, so um, for Christmas, um, sorry about my furnace noise, um, for Christmas my mom sent me um, some um, some yarn. Um, so she sent me enough yarn to make a sweater and a shawl. Um, and um, so those are going to be like one of the next projects that I cast on. Um, but she also sent me um, in a second package, she sent me some yarn. Um, this is from Knit Picks again. It is the Stroll Tweed. And it is, um, it's called Marine Heather. Um, and it is a little bit lighter than it is showing up on my camera for whatever reason. Um, 
but yeah so this is marine heather um i am going to be knitting a shawl for my mom out of this um it is going to be uh, the hohi locatelli i believe it's called imagine when um and yeah so i'll be knitting a shawl for my mom out of these it's really funny because my mom will ask me to knit her sweaters all the time and I tell her no because they take a lot of work and a lot of measurement and they're they're a pain. So I don't tend to knit sweaters for other people unless, as you saw in my works in progress, I'm knitting a sweater for someone else. Um, so unless um, they're either paying for the materials or it is a cropped sweater that has shorter sleeves. Like I don't I don't do full length, big, giant, oversized cardigans for other people because it does take a lot of time and effort and um, I would prefer not. <laughs> so, um, but then she never asked me for a shawl, so I just told her, no, I'm not knitting you a sweater. And then, um, so finally, I guess, I guess I had never told her that I don't knit sweaters for other people because it takes a long time. So she she was like well would you knit me a shawl I'm like yeah just buy the yarn and tell me what pattern you want and i will make you a shawl um and she picked a pattern that i've been wanting to knit for a really long time so um which was great i mean i want to knit it for myself but i'll knit it for my mom first i guess um but yeah so that was the the sort of acquisition that i made um out in yarn anyway um my mom gave that to me um, I have acquired a little bit of fabric, but I don't know if I'm going to share my fabric acquisitions with you until I actually make something out of them. Um, because I think I will be starting a segment on my knitted, my sew, sewn projects. So, um, we will see if I make a whole lot of progress on that. My goal for the year is to make three outfits that I'm proud to wear on a regular basis. So um, I really want to make a dress. Um, I really want to make a pair of like slacks and a blouse. And then I really want to make um, like either another dress or um, or another like I really want to make a button-down shirt that actually fits me because I have a really hard time finding button-down shirts that actually fit so anyway to moving into my sewing segment um, I have produced one item and it is a knitting bag because I don't have enough of them and yeah so um, there are some problems with this but I uh, had a thoroughly fun time making it I haven't snipped any of these fab any of these strings anyway so here it is hooray it is a bag it is a rectangle of fabric um so this fabric I found as like a remnant at Joann's um and I really like the blue that goes through it so I got a blue zipper and then the inside um I made the bag a lot bigger than I thought I was going to at first so I used two separate fabrics for the lining so I have black and a blue um anyway so yeah so it's fully lined um and it fits quite a bit of yarn. Um, it, I didn't use any interfacing um, because that was something that I forgot when I was at the craft store. Um, and yeah, so I didn't use any interfacing, which is fine. Most of the time, what I want from a project bag is to be able to zip it. Um, that is the only, or like to draw string it closed uh, and like have it fully closed because um, I have a dog and um, he gets his hair everywhere. Um, so like I would, I want to be able to completely close it so that there's no, um, no way to get into it. No hair can get into it when I'm not working on it. Uh, it just sort of preserves the life of the thing. So yeah, so I just stuck all three balls of that Knit Picks yarn in here. You can barely even tell there's anything in it. Um, and I'm really excited. It's, it's a really fun, um, fun endeavor. I do have fabric enough to make another bag, not of, I'm, I mean, with, of the outer lining, the outer fabric, I do have more to make other bags. Um, I also bought some more, um, fat quarters to like practice making other bags with. Um, and then I also, um, have fabric to make sort of a, a like flowy sort of over like a I think they're called kimono tops but I don't really like that name for them so um, 
I think it's more like an Asian inspired jacket type thing. Anyway, so um, I'm definitely gonna be making those here in the near future, so I will share them when I have finished them. Um, yeah, and so I think that is everything that I have for knitting content. Um, I uh, also have a little bit of news. Um, if you would like to follow me more uh, actively, um, I have started a blog. Um, so I have started a blog, it is called Skein of Thought, um, and it is skeinofthought.com. I will put the link uh, down below and I'll put it on the screen right here. So it's skeinofthought.com and uh, it is a blog of knitting and random thoughts that I have and probably some feminist issues will come up on there at some point um, because that is important to me. So, um, so yeah, so there, it's more of a way for me to share um, my thoughts uh, on current events and on knitting trends and um, stuff like that. So I have two posts over there already, so if you want to um, head over there and check those out, um, I would really appreciate it. Um, yeah, um, that's basically it. I plan on posting weekly or um, every other week, um, depending on my uh, crazy hectic schedule. Um, so. Yeah, there's that. There's two posts out there already. Um, go check it out and um, stay tuned because there is going to be a little bit more of um, more engagement with that site and YouTube as well. I have a I have some plans to do sort of a live stream once a month, um, talking about knitting and talking about life and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, check it out. Um, and yeah, that's basically all I've been up to. So I think I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with me. Um, and I will see you again very soon. Um, I'm hoping to record another episode in two weeks. So thank you so much. Bye.